When a patient comes to me with a toothache and a radiograph is required, I recommend an intraoral radiograph that covers the tooth in question. What do you think I would do if a patient came to me with temporomandibular joint pain or a fracture of the jaw? Will a small intraoral radiograph suffice? Certainly not. A larger extraoral radiograph that provides an image of a wider area is required. In this video, we will learn interesting facts about extraoral films and their accessories, such as cassettes and intensifying screens. There are two types of extraoral films non screen film and screen films. Non screen films require longer exposure time and are not recommended in dentistry. For dental and maxillofacial images, screen films are used along with a device called intensifying screens. Hence the name. The screen films I use are of varying sizes like 5 into 10 inches, 5 into 12 inches, 6 into 12 inches, and 8 into 10 inches, depending on the area to be imaged. In our previous video of the dark room, we mentioned an allocated area to load and unload cassettes. They are containers into which extra oral films are loaded before exposure. They are available in two forms rigid and flexible. A rigid cassette is stronger, protects the intensifying screens from damage and makes the loading of the film accurate. On the other hand, flexible cassettes are only used for panoramic imaging and loading requires more efficiency by the operating personnel. Both rigid and flexible cassettes have to be light tight to protect the extra oral film from exposure and to hold the intensifying screens in perfect contact with the film. A lack of proper contact results in reduced image sharpness. Sharpness is the capability of the X-rays to reproduce distinct outlines of an object and its smallest details on the image. Let us understand how a cassette is constructed. Imagine a hard-bound book of three pages where the front and back cover can be compared to the two aluminium or bakelite hinged lids of the cassette. The front cover of the cassette faces the X-ray tube and is constructed of plastic or low-density metal, allowing X-rays to pass through without resistance. The back cover is made of heavy metal, lined with lead, to absorb X-rays that pass through the front lid and the film, thereby reducing scatter radiation. Moving on to intensifying screens. To understand what these are, let us rewind. In the history of dental radiography, Scientists discovered that inorganic salts like phosphor, fluoresce, or in simpler terms, emit visible light when exposed to an X-ray beam. It was observed that the intensity of this fluorescence was proportional to the X-ray energy. Coming back to the present, intensifying screens are devices that contain phosphor, converting X-ray energy into visible light. The intensifying screens are installed inside the front and back covers of the cassette, much like the first and third page of the book being stuck to the front and back cover of the book. The film is like the second page, positioned between these two intensifying screens. The screen films used here are sensitive to the visible light emitted in the blue or green spectrum. Intensifying screen makes the image receptor 10 to 60 times more sensitive to X-rays than the film alone. Consequently, the benefit is a reduced dose of X radiation to the patient. Let us look at the composition of the intensifying screens. It consists of a base, reflecting layer, phosphor layer, and a coat. Let us learn about the role of each layer. The first one is the base. This is made of polyester plastic material, about 0.25 mm thick. Why do you think this layer is important? Well, it's because all the other layers depend on it for mechanical support. Next, we have the reflecting layer, made of magnesium oxide or titanium dioxide. Let's discuss its role. We know that the intensifying screen converts X-ray photons to visible light through a phenomenon called fluorescence. Most of this visible light is directed towards the film. However, some of it is directed backwards, away from the film. 
When this happens, it comes in contact with the reflecting layer, which redirects it back to the film. Although the reflecting layer has a significant role, it has one disadvantage. The light it reflects is more divergent, resulting in an unsharp image. The third layer is the phosphor layer, placed over the reflecting layer. It contains phosphorus crystals suspended in a polymeric binder. This is the most essential layer, as the phosphor crystals absorb the X-ray photons, fluoresce, animate visible light. Rare earth elements, such as lanthanum and gadolinium, are added to this layer, thereby increasing the speed of the film and decreasing patient exposure time. Are you wondering how? Well, they convert each X-ray photon to about 4,000 lower energy light photons. The two types of phosphors used in dental screens are crystalline calcium tungstate, which fluoresces in the blue spectrum, and terbium-activated gadolinium oxysulfide, which fluoresces in the green spectrum. The final layer is the protective coat of 50 micrometer thickness. It is placed over the phosphor layer. As the name suggests, it protects the intensifying screen from mechanical insults, such as abrasion and scratches. It is important to regularly clean the screen as debris can cause white spots on the image. Fortunately, the protective layer makes cleaning easy. Quiz With this, we come to the end of this video. We hope you had fun learning with us.